I am Dr. Justine Fagihi Farr, and I'm a professor of occupational therapy at the Master Occupational Therapy Program at UT Tyler. In addition, I'm a practicing pediatric and young adult occupational therapy clinician. I'm passionate about the condition of auditory processing disorder, or APD, a disorder that is not well understood or even officially recognized in many places in the world. It's also sometimes referred to as central auditory processing disorder, or CAPD for short. As a clinician, I have always focused on maximizing an individual's ability to function seamlessly within community settings, and APD presents many challenges, as we will discuss. First, what is APD? It's a condition that involves areas of the nervous system that are responsible for recognition and processing of sounds, like noise and language. It's the information that our ears take in. The ear structures are functioning normally without evidence of hearing loss, but the person experiences distortions of sounds and has trouble processing spoken language. Some people think that when a person is diagnosed with APD as a child, they grow out of the condition during early adulthood. The fact is that the improvement that occurs is due to age-related improvements in a person's ability to compensate for their symptoms. The hallmark symptom of APD in adults is the inability to process spoken language in noisy environments or in the presence of excessive reverberation or echoes. This is especially challenging in large open areas such as gymnasiums, theaters, restaurants, or noisy work environments. A person may also have difficulty processing speech in environments where multiple conversations are occurring at the same time, like in restaurants, and thus they have difficulty listening and focusing in on just one conversation. The third major symptom is difficulty processing and executing multi-step verbal directions. A person with APD may only process the first and last part of a multi-step direction and may need the directions to be repeated, simplified, or written out. This can be very debilitating for individuals in their educational and work settings. The negative impacts on socialization and relationships from these symptoms is immense. The need for extra processing time and extra time to generate responses may cause conversational partners to become impatient with the person with APD, or they may even avoid speaking with them in the future. Adults with APD often may not read social cues accurately, and they may not process humor, teasing, or jokes. Not surprising if your brain doesn't process language correctly. The American Speech, Language, and Hearing Association reports that males are twice as likely to develop APD as females, and 23 to 76 percent of adults 55 and older have APD. Aging is definitely a risk factor. And we don't know how common the condition actually is because there are no standardized means as yet to define, assess, or treat APD. It is thought that individuals with autism, spectrum disorders, ADD or ADHD, seizure disorders, dyslexia, or language delays are more likely to have APD. Multiple ear infections in childhood are also thought to be a risk factor. A person who experiences traumatic brain injury, brain tumors, or a stroke may be more vulnerable. In addition, early studies on COVID survivors indicate APD development for some. A diagnosis for APD can only be made by a specially trained audiologist, usually found in an ear, nose, and throat practice. A series of tests utilizing special equipment is used to make a diagnosis. Treatments for APD can include speech and language therapy, which trains the brain to improve processing and teaches compensatory strategies. FM listening systems or hearing aids are also thought to help. While treatments can lead to improved symptoms, accommodations are also essential. Environmental modifications fall into two types, 
and aim to create a redundant listening and learning environment. Bottom-up environmental modifications, which are acoustic-based, include hearing assistive technology, architectural interventions to reduce echoes, and preferential seating away from adverse noise. While top-down environmental modifications, which change how information is imparted, include checking for comprehension, complementing verbal speech with visual cues, slowing the speaking rate, repeating key information, providing written instructions, using a recording device, and providing note takers. Individuals with APD can be taught techniques to compensate for weak listening ability by using both top-down and bottom-up modifications. As yet, we don't know how many individuals are impacted by auditory processing disorder and how it should best be treated for individuals of various age groups. For adults, it's often a lifelong challenge with far-reaching consequences. It can negatively impact one's confidence and self-esteem. It can deter socialization and impact a family's function and cohesion. It can cause challenges with overall learning across the lifespan and can limit a person's career success, employment, or retention. I hope this presentation has helped you increase your awareness of this important disorder and how it impacts affected individuals. Thank you for joining me on this walk with the doc.